welcome to Smokey Steve and Mark. I'm Mark. Steve is actually not around. He actually ran to the store. So welcome or welcome back. Is it nice to see you? Okay, so we'll get all the fun stuff out of the way right now. Happy weekend! Oh, yes! <laughs> Definitely love the weekend. I don't know why. You know, I don't hate my job. I don't, I don't dread going into work. I, you know, um, maybe it's like just having to have something to do or responsibility or something. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but uh, uh, when the weekend comes and I know that I don't have to get up and go to work, it does feel a little bit better. You know, it does. And uh, uh, we've had some really nice weather. Um, it was, uh, if you remember, it was very, very hot. And then it kind of leveled out a little bit. So we've been in the 80s and uh, it's been actually pretty nice. Now today it got up to almost 90 a little bit hot there but um the evenings have been really nice too it's perfect uh, gardening weather and i actually was just outside right before this um got home and then i was like oh i want to do a couple things before i film and uh, it was really nice you know it was warm but there was such a nice breeze going and uh and i'll be giving you a little uh, garden update uh on mondays with mark um but for tonight oh yeah it's finally finally <laughs> the mental health check-in well for me anyway I, um, these always make me nervous. I'm always a little uncomfortable doing these. I, I don't know why, probably because they're a little more serious. I don't know, but, uh, I'm more in the, uh, well, as far as the channel goes, I'm more of the, like, um, I don't know, like if I was, if this were just me, well, I guess it is just me doing it, but like, uh, I'm fighting the temptation to like break into like, oh, a heavy thought segment or maybe a summer road trip or a spooky segment or something, you know, and this isn't the place for that, you know? Um, so, uh, but yeah, uh, I thought I would sit down and, uh, do a little mental health check-in with you. Um, and, uh, for those of you, um, maybe who haven't, maybe you don't know my history i thought uh we would, we would just start with that i'll just recap like you know the history of my mental health anyway um i didn't write a script or anything but i did do a few points so i wouldn't forget you know i do think that uh, these type of videos are a little bit better when i i, I kind of just speak from the heart but the problem is is that i have all of this going on in my head and i find it very difficult to have that come out of my mouth if you know what i'm saying it's a little hard to do for me i don't know so, so um, just to uh like recap uh specifically my mental health uh, in the history um i really uh you know i was diagnosed with clinical depression um in the very early 90s but prior to that um i do remember my grandmother taking me to a uh, what i believe is a psychologist i i was very young i was around 10 years old his name was Dr. Woodyear, and um, and I remember the sessions. I remember him talking to me, and I remember like you know the therapy. I don't remember the specifics of it, but I remember my grandmother taking me uh, probably for a year. I I don't remember how long, but it was it was a while. And um, you know, so at that young age, you know, I I was in therapy, and uh, as many of you do know, I was uh, I'm from a, a an abusive split family my parents were divorced when i was seven um my dad was very uh, abusive um and uh, a lot of that and my mother my mother was sick uh she had ms uh when i was born she was diagnosed and she was very sick through her whole life and so you know a lot of that you know stuck with me through my whole life and kind of you know affected my mental health in many different ways um you know i didn't really struggle too much with it uh growing up but you know but that was because i repressed that i put put it all all behind and i had to grow up you know very fast at a very young age my mother needed taken care of more times than not you know i had to be able to deal with the abuse from my father you know until i had a a pretty life-changing um event or time in my life when i was 14 um you know i was tired of playing the victim i was i was overweight i was like always the i was the oddball you know i didn't fit in anywhere um and uh, i would come home to a really tumultuous household and so there was no safe place for me you know and one at one point i was like i i was tired of playing the victim i was tired of all that you know and uh i remember over the summer i i like exercised and i ran i did all kinds of stuff and uh and uh, around my birthday i had i ran away from home and um that it changed things for me um i guess i kind of took control of my life i guess i don't know um and uh, then i ultimately i did come back and i moved in with my grandmother um through high school 
So my grandmother was a very, very important person in my life. Um, you know, thinking back now as an adult, I tend to have a little hard time accepting the fact that the adults in my life and the adults whom I loved, you know, um, it didn't do more about what was happening in my home. Uh, it, it was like the big secret. You know, they all knew my father was an extremely angry, abusive person. Um, and people like my grandmother and, you know, I mean, I had family. I mean, I had aunts and uncles and things like that that were in my life back then. Not so much now, but, um, and nothing was really done about that. So the one thing that sticks with me to this point is that I just think that, you know, and I don't, you know, the situation is what it is. You know, it is what it is. I don't know why more wasn't done. Uh, you know, uh, this was a different time. I don't know. But um, so that is just a little bit of that history. And then in the late 90s, when I was almost 30, I had um, started experimenting with drugs and uh, was uh, became a full blown addict, you know, um, through my 30s. And um, my drug of choice was opiates, uh, any kind of opiates, painkiller, you know, all that. And um, it wasn't until I got into my first rehab that I um, started unpacking all this stuff, you know, uh, with therapy. And then I stuck, uh, that therapy stuck and I stayed with therapy, um, well, pretty much till today. I mean, I don't actively see a therapist today, but, um, you know, it was a game changer. It helped me. Oh, it helped where me was I going? Oh, oh, so now that I'm older and uh, I am where I am now, you know, I have found that uh, I'm struggling with a little more uh, mental health issues than I have ever in my life. Um, I've never really experienced this before. And of course, I'm married to somebody who also struggles with mental health issues. And Stephen is like, he is packed with information about mental health. I mean, you know, I, and we do support each other a lot you know it's 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 really good to have that in my life you know we both have had substance use issues we both have some mental health issues and we're able to help each other out that way in fact we both work in the industries as well i'm in addiction and he's in mental health so you know it's it's with us every day and at work you know helping people it does keep it green for me you know it does um you know it, it helps in that way you know as well but i do find myself struggling more with uh anxiety for one. And uh, when I tend to struggle with mental health issues, a lot of, it's like a domino effect, you know, like uh, this affects that, affects that, affects that. And before you know it, you know, the anxiety kicks in. Decision fatigue is a very real thing for me. And it's a very real thing too. In fact, it really could be its own topic. It could be its own video. And I'm thinking of maybe doing one like that because decision fatigue can be difficult to talk about because you know, some people have problems making decisions. They do. But when it becomes decision fatigue, it can be debilitating. And the decision does not have to be life changing. It can be, you know, like, what shirt am I going to wear today? What TV program am I going to put on? You know, it doesn't have to be, should I marry this person? Should I take out this $50,000 loan? Should I buy a house? You know, it doesn't have to be major decisions. It can be the tiniest of decisions. And it is debilitating. I mean, it really is. Social anxiety is another one. You know, growing up, I was, you know, in high school and a little bit later, I was always surrounded by people and I had a lot of friends and acquaintances. Not so much anymore. And I'm not saying that that's an issue. I don't, I don't really miss it, you know. Um, and I do have some friends in my life. So, but I do find that I get very anxious, very nervous. And I avoid uh, social situations. You know, I do. And, um, I don't know. And then there's people pleasing, you know, and this is something that I have to work on a lot, especially with my job. When I'm talking to somebody, a patient, it's like I'm there with them. It's like I'm feeling what they're feeling, you know, and sometimes I can't shake that. And sometimes I bring that home. And uh, so I've been working on that. You know, that's something I think that is like acquired, you know, um, for a person who's like empathetic and caring and, you know, people in my line of business and people like me, we're fixers. We want to fix things. You know, we want to, I don't know. And we don't have all the answers and we can't fix everything, but we want to, you know, and that can really, I don't know. It can, it can be, it can be hard, you know, it can be so. And then, you know, of course, then all of this circles around into self-esteem, self-worth, all the, you know, all the selves. Um, for me, it does anyway, you know, and, uh, it's a big one for me. Um, 
the self-worth and self-esteem is huge for me. And uh, so right now, uh, over the last, I would say, couple months, I think I've talked about this before, whatever's going on, I don't know what's going on, but I have been struggling a little bit, you know, and um, uh, it spills out over into like pretty much all the areas of my life. That's work. That's my personal life. And that's here on the channel too. The three, you know, most important things in my life really, you know, and I know some people might be thinking, well, you put the, your channel, your YouTube channel up there is something that important. It is, it is important for me. And, um, you know, I, I, well, I'll tell you, I guess why in a little bit, but I mean, it, it, it's an important thing in my life, you know? So on that note, let's break into a summer road trip. I just, just, just kidding, I feel. But anyway, so in speaking about the channel, you know, I, uh, uh, you know, the channel, um, you know, it really has helped me a lot since I've joined the channel. It has it helped me come out of the shell that I was in before I was involved with the channel. It has given me a place or, or, or a venue or a stage, so to speak, to to kind of do the things that I like to do and have somebody see it and like respond and say, hey, I really like that or whatever, you know, which is, um, which is important to me, you know, um, I do have to watch uh, also, though, because I, uh, I feel very comfortable here now on the channel with you guys. I really do. I mean, some folks here have been here since the beginning, and I have made some really great friends and acquaintances since being on this channel. I, you know, um, and I'm very grateful for it. Very, very grateful. But, you know, I do have to watch. I mean, I am planted in reality. I, I realize that you're not literally sitting across from me and, you know, can give me support or whatever. But talking like this, making videos, even in the live streams when we talk and stuff like that, it helps me. You know, I'm not saying it's a replacement for therapy, but it can be part of how to, you know, cope, how to stay well, you know, um, especially with, you know, how nice you guys are for really we we really do have some very very nice people um as part of our community here and i'm very grateful but uh you know i just didn't want anyone to think that um well i rely too much on it you know because i can i absolutely can i can latch on and you know like uh, oh i told stephen that whenever um we were courting you know i remember telling him look you know you better make sure this is what you want because once i latch on you can't get rid of me <laughs> and here we are married all these years later <laughs> so and anyway. you know well as far as work goes you know um they can spill over into work too and that's been happening uh recently and uh, about I, I think it was about three weeks ago my co-workers all came into my office and had a little meeting with me and they asked me if i was okay you know they had noticed that i wasn't my same old self you know and uh, they were right you know they were absolutely right um before i knew it uh you know my work was lacking i wasn't doing my responsibilities or the things that i wanted to do at work i was not seeing as many patients if any in a day sometimes and uh there was uh, like a fear behind it there was like and you know i believe i you know, i'm not a therapist but you know i believe it's that whole circling around thing you know the self-esteem and the self-worth who am I to be able to help this person? You know, you're nothing. You're struggling yourself. You're blah, blah, blah. Or um, you don't even deserve to be in this position. You know, those internal, um, that internal dialogue that can be so devastating. You know, that all happened at work. Now, that meeting is exactly what I needed. It was like a family coming together, which uh, is another thing that I'm grateful for is my co-workers and my job you know we look out for each other and it is great and uh, I had made it a point to make some changes at work and da, 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 and I have and um, uh, being on time for work and uh, I have a big problem being on time I'm like on time between five and ten minutes late all the time <laughs> if that makes sense you know but uh, I really worked on it and I've been on time now and uh, I have some projects and stuff that I'm doing at work and, and work feels a little bit better we'll just say that so you know so yeah really grateful for that one <laughs> You know, as far as my personal life goes, um, you know, it absolutely 
this spills over into my personal life. Um, you know, uh, now, you know, granted, I love my life. I, I love my husband. I love the boys. Bandit, he's like my support animal, you know, my emotional support animal. He really is. And I mean, Oscar is too, you know, um, it's, it's, uh, it's wonderful having them in my life. It really is. And I love my apartment, you know, and, and, and the garden and, and coming home and, and making videos, you know, I do, I do. Um, but when you're in the midst of, you know, depression or anxiety or um, any type of mental health issue, you know, uh, all of that can become kind of affected or in jeopardy or however you want to put it that way. And, you know, I mean, and it has, you know, I can be, I can be just sitting in my head and all this negative dialogue is going on about my personal life, you know, oh, we're going to be evicted. Now, part of that is probably a little bit of trauma from the last place we were in, you know, the knock, knock, knock. Your entire building has been condemned. You have three hours to get out. You know, could be something like that. I don't know. Um, you know, um, the garden, the garden, which is something that I used to cope. This garden is something that I love to do. And, you know, being out there, I just love to do it. I can turn that can turn into something negative as well. I shouldn't have planted this here. It should have been there. You ruined the whole thing. Who do you think you are? Like, you know, making videos about your garden. You, this isn't like you're not a professional gardener, da, 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 you know, that type of thing. I can take anything that I love and turn it into something ugly very easily and without really realizing it, you know, um, it, same with the channel, same with the channel. You know, I can, I can get caught up in, uh, oh, I, you know, it's going out too late. It's too long. People don't like what we're doing. You know, um, you know, sometimes, yeah, I get a little bit down. I, you know, uh, another way that I cope is, is, is making videos and editing. I told you, you know, my favorite type of things to do are the ones that are like, like themed videos or specials or those little segments we do where we you know uh, uh do like the spooky shivers it's you know the things i i really enjoy doing those it's creative for me um and yeah i can get a little bit down if i pour my heart into something or work really hard into a video and then we get very low views on it or or something like that you know um but um i i you know i have to bring myself in and i have to realize that um okay it would you still did it. You still were creative. You still created something. You have something to show. You have something to be proud of. You know, um, it, it doesn't take that away. You know, it doesn't take that away just because I didn't get 10 million views on it, you know. Um, so, you know, there's that. And uh, I just sometimes it feels like I have to be vigilant constantly every second of the day. Having an addictive personality, I have to watch that it doesn't rear its ugly head up in other ways, you know, without realizing it, you know, shopping, uh, eating, you know, anything, it, it, it could be anything, you know, um, when I'm uh, struggling, uh, I tend to get a little bit confused too. And like, almost like a fog. I always describe it as like two electrical wires that just don't quite connect. If that makes sense. I can't, it just doesn't, it's not like, necessarily confusion or a type of like dementia or something like that it's more like like a fog kind of i don't know but it can, it can bring you down you know it can make you a little bit you know, depressed because, uh, and um, when i'm confused and i'm dealing with a bunch of mental health stuff and and feeling overwhelmed and and that type of thing you know um you know, any, I can abuse my medication, you know, and I'm not even talking about controlled substances, you know, I'm like a prime example. Um, I take prednisone, you know, and um, when I take prednisone, I know that it helps with inflammation, it helps with pain, and it actually helps my mood. And a lot of people report the opposite of that. They, they report that the prednisone or any type of steroid can, can make them mean or angry or down. It doesn't do that for me. It does the opposite for me. So when I'm feeling that way, it's very easy to just want to take another pill, take another prednisone and I'll feel better. And that's, that's prednisone. That's not even, you know, a controlled substance. Um, so, you know, there's that. And I have to watch my triggers too. You know, tr money, money is a prime example. Money can be a trigger where, you know, we are, we have, we're a two income family. We, we make enough to pay our bills. We do, we have a nice apartment. Um, we, we, we pay our bills, but it's like we don't have extra money, you know, and say like, I don't know, we had a month, like everything comes in at once, like maybe yearly uh, dues for something, uh, car needs repairs, this broke, this broke, like if they all come at once and you're like broke and you're like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? You know, like 
that type of mentality is a huge trigger um, for me because I grew up and also we were not rich. And uh, so I remember not having nice things as a child or should I say like things that like the other kids had, you know, um, and uh, struggling through college. I was always on my own, you know, and I was struggling through college and struggling with my first place. Then in addiction, oh, money was always an issue. Of course it was. And um, so when that happens in real time, it, you know, at this time in my life, it's a trigger for sure. Um, you, know, you know, I've been just trying to save up to get my teeth fixed. And uh, another thing that brings me down, you know, it, it's, it's a self-esteem issue. It's a self-worth issue. It's all those things, you know. Um, and it just seems like impossible. It seems like I'll never reach that point where I will have enough money to get the work done that I need done on that. Um, I do think once that is done, I think, hopefully a lot of things will change for me, especially on the self-esteem level there, you know, but, um, but it is what it is. And I, it's funny, I've come clean with you as far as the teeth go. Like, I don't know, months ago, I remember saying, Hey, look, this is what it is. And this is what I'm doing about it, you know, but, uh, so yeah, there's Ooh, that. So that's and, where I'm um, at today with my mental health. Yes, I'm struggling. And, you know, um, but I'm, I'm getting through it. I'm asking for help. I'm doing the things that I need to do to And, cope. you know, those and things are, I have, I have just a few things written down here, you know, uh, of course, medication, you know, I take uh Cymbalta now and it has really helped. The Cymbalta was the only drug that I've taken ever that has, it has kind of helped me. It really, really has. Um, the garden, that is a way that I cope. Absolutely a way. Get out there. It grounds me. It keeps me present, and uh, which is really, really important. Um, therapy. Um, you know, I work with my therapist. So, I mean, I pretty much have therapy every day if I want it, you know. Um, surrounding myself with positive people who have my best interest at heart, you know. Um, that can be hard, but... It's definitely doable, you know. And then, you know, like I said before here on the channel, it is absolutely one of the ways that I cope. I love editing uh, and making something special for you guys. You know, I do. I love doing that kind of thing. Um, I did want to mention this because I feel bad whenever I'm in this state, and it's been a couple months, that I allow... Um, not allow, but it seems overwhelming to keep up with messages and emails and things like that, you know. And it doesn't matter who it is. Um, it's... I don't know. It's a fear. You know, it's like a, oh, I have to look at my emails and it's a feeling inside, you know, um, you know, much like the, the depression or the decision fatigue. Well, you know, if it's say, okay, what am I going to watch on TV? Okay. It's a very minor decision. It doesn't impact really anything, but the feeling is there. It, the feeling is extremely strong and, you know, uh, it's the same. It's the same with like the messages. I feel terrible that, um, sometimes it takes me a week or more to get back to somebody. Um, I feel bad that the folks who are helping us out here on the channel, like, you know, who you are, Mayor, Angela, you know, people who, you know, that I haven't, like, conversed as much as I feel I should, you know, um, now, you know, and then all of that just kind of adds to it, you know, and here on the channel, you know, sometimes it gets exhausting acting as if everything is okay, if that makes sense. Like when we're doing specials, when we're doing a regular video and I'm just not feeling well. Well, I don't want that to spill out. You know, I don't want that to affect like the video we're doing or affect you guys. So I try to act like nothing's wrong, you know, and um, which, you know, you have to do sometimes, of course, you know, like you have to go to work, you have to do things, you know, and uh, sometimes it is the best thing to do. You know, sometimes it is, you know, and sometimes it is not. One thing I do know is that keeping everything inside it does make things worse. It does. And having this toolbox of, of things that I use to cope with um, helps a lot. And that saying that Steve always uses that his therapist gave him, you know, is this is this fact or is this a feeling? You know, really seriously, I need to take a look at those things, you know. But, um, but you know, I, I, uh, I just wanted to give you a little update of where I'm at mentally. Um, that's where I'm at. But you know what? Overall, things are good. I'm always, always trying to stay positive, and uh, uh, that helps a lot too. You know, well, I hope it does. I mean, that's kind of the theme of our channel, you know, positivity. <laughs> and uh, so, anyway, um, I really hope that I made sense tonight. Like I said, I don't have all the answers. I'm just a person like anyone else who is who is going through some mental health issues. Um, like anyone else who might be going through the same issues, you know, and uh, these are the things that work for me. And these are the things that don't work for me. So, um, but here's to a brighter, uh, brighter future. It is, everything is going to be fine. One thing I do know that this is not endless. It's not, it will pass. Now they say this too 
shell has, and it will. So thank you so much for spending your time with me and, and listening to me, you know, uh, 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 spill everything else, you, you know. I definitely hit that subscribe button, okay? And uh, the notification bell, so you know when we have new videos coming out. Oh yeah, check us out over on social media, Facebook, X, Instagram, and all of our contact info is right down below. That's our email address. Um, and our post office box too. Uh, if you have any questions or anything, I'll be more than happy to answer it for you. Shoot me an email. Uh, we're gonna be putting together a Q&A video um, soon and we'll let you know when that is. So if you have any um, like personal questions for us, you can get those in too. We haven't done one of those in a while. So uh, thank you again. You have a fantastic weekend. And we will see you tomorrow for, uh, for some Saturday night chit chat. <laughs> Take care everybody and I'll talk to you next time. Ciao. Ah. Mm -hmm.